So here, if you want to know how to do your own little custom little trans cooler. Oh, fucking horse trailer steering. All right, so step one, figure out what cooler you're gonna wanna go with. That's the one I decided. It's a big 19 row derail. You can get it on Amazon. Then, depending on what you have, in my case, I got a 4080, you're gonna have these two fittings that are up there. You got the front one, and then you're going to have the back one. There's a big difference. You gotta make sure you know what you're doing prior to tackle. So here, you have your front fitting. This is factory. This is the front fitting. See how it's really shallow. The rear one has the long neck that's on here. And this is for, I don't know if it's the drum or the rear drum, but if you don't put a long fitting in, fluid will not reach out and lube what it has to lube and you're gonna ruin your transmission. Long one goes in the back. Then the reason why I went to all of these fittings here and these lines from the previous stock ones is because mines were rusted and rotten through. This is the factory cooler. This is much mo smaller. Jesus, focus. Piece of sh Can you focus? This is much smaller. And then you can see it's rusted. That line broke and they try to put this hose with a clamp. I don't even know. There it is. They just try to clamp it and then it just leaked. So with that, everything being rusted, I didn't want to mess with anything and I just wanted to get, a, get something upgraded because peace of mind, really. So step one, get rid of all your lines. Figure out what you want to do and get rid of all of it. Make your diagram if you have to. And I'll show you what I made on my diagram. This is a little janky, but this is how mine works. So some cars only go from the trans to the radiator. Some have trans to a cooler some have trans to radiator to the cooler so you need to figure out where your factory routing is and how it's lined up right here on my case it goes from the trans front feed to the lower radiator upper radiator to the cooler then from the cooler return to the transmission that's how mine is wrap that all up figure out how everything's going to be figured and then go from there then you can start gripping and ripping you can see here this is from the trans going to the cooler this one is going up to the bottom of the trans or bottom of the radiator but I'm missing one fitting so here all of these are dash six I went with evil energy and their lines so the fittings I got on the trans here are dash six a n so if you want AN-6 and the 4080, these are the ICT billet adapters, and those are a 6AN. So that went to a dash six, so everything's dash six. Everything's routed right here, boom, everything's there, boom. Tied in again, away from everything. Generally follow the factory uh, line routing and you won't have an issue. Then you can plumb and zip tie or however you wanna, no, no zip tie gang right here, that's a factory cramp seal or cramp o-ring thing I can't talk then you should be good to make the fitting I'll go ahead and show you how I do that so I did a video similar to this in my two-door but I'll do it again for the Suburban because we're doing the same thing and everything's here in the open these fittings you can see here the hose is attached to this female AN fitting and that's gonna go into this male AN fitting that's on the cooler and I'll show you how all that's gonna work same thing here this fittings these are from evil energy they come with instructions what well, you can see in here I'll turn this light on inside here you're gonna see some threads okay now these threads are gonna go on to your hose here and then this is gonna be rotated counterclockwise this is gonna sink all the way in the hose is going to be bottomed out into, let me show you, because you can see here, these threads are for your fitting, for this guy. 
these coarser ones in the bottom, the ones that are in the bottom here, those are going to be to suck the hose all the way to the top. You're going to want the hose butted up all the way to the bottom of those threads. As you can see there, counterclockwise, the fitting sunk all the way in along my thumb as it's sinking in and then bottomed out right there. So once you get the fitting like this, and one thing to keep in mind, you're going to want a really good cutting tool, something that'll make a nice clean cut on steel braided wire. Then this right here, you're going to put into a vise. You AN clamps, put into a vise here with the AN specific vise for AN fittings. Here, get a wrench and spin it down. And then you have a correct AN fitting. So to show you, it'll look like this. Hose. AN fitting on there with an angle tip. And then this guy is free to turn wherever your little heart desires and that's going to go on the radiator now if you want to turn your your radiator fittings into dash six you're going to need to figure out what fitting and, and do your homework that that guy is and get an adapter go from here to dash six and then that's it feel free to route the hoses wherever you want to route them if you follow a factory wiring or uh routing diagram then you're gonna be good you can do it however you want you could take this you can mount it underneath you could just solely just run this it's gonna be up to you but with me and the factory cooler three hours of highway driving in this suburban i was about 118 to 120 degrees trans stamp that was about 45 degrees 50 degrees outside a little bit of rain so you know cooler was getting cold but I got this just in case because if I go and I tow the two door somewhere to, to wherever we're going and I'm in the desert and it's 110 outside, I need a badass cooler. So that is uh, for extreme, this is probably really overkill for this because I don't plan on towing 10,000 pounds for 14 hours, but that's how I did it. I like to make things really nice and that's how I went about doing this whole setup. So. There's plenty of videos, but again, this is a D-Rail, a D-Rail uh, 19 row cooler. When I mounted this, you can mount it however you want it, but you can see the factory bracket here goes along. This is all one piece, but what I ended up doing is I just ended up cutting it here, cutting it here, and then I went ghetto with some push style rivets. Not really rivets, but these, they go out and stick through the radiator. We just move that because we don't need it. And you can see where they kind of stick out right there. A little hard to see, but that's how I did it on my trans cooler setup. And that's it. I'm waiting for one fitting. Everything's going to work. I've done this already on the two door and it works. If you want to get something remote mounted with a fan, you can do it. But this is how you can do it with factory routing and lines and everything like that. Like with these fittings and these AN fittings, they install dry. There's no thread locker or sealant that you got to put on these. One thing that I, I did on a previous one that I won't do again is using the NPT fitting. These AN regular threads, just a normal nut and socket style thread. Before I used a pipe thread that go into the cooler, I had no luck whatsoever. So if you're doing this and Maybe other people have luck, but just not me. But whenever, whenever uh, oh my God, I used the NPT fittings, they leaked. They lasted a day and they leaked. I will never use those again. So everything AN, everything regular fittings, and that's it. So we'll see how it does later on as far as trans cooling and all the other kind of stuff, especially with a lot of city driving or a bunch of rock crawling because you're doing a lot of low miles or off-road driving you're doing a lot of rpm fluctuation low load high load low rpm that's what i was looking for see how it does but that's how i did it see how you do it however your heart desires i just love the fact that i have roof lights and i have corner lights but yeah that's how i did it and if it helps i uh, i'm glad i helped you
Later.